Hey guys, welcome to Boxing Squared for boxing news and views from around the internet. One of the questions heading into the Tyson Fury and Deontay Wilder fight, which has kind of been left unanswered to some degree, is you know not only the winner, but in terms of their legacy. But if we actually take a look at their legacy, what has this fight done for Tyson Fury? What has it done for Deontay Wilder? And I think a number of things. And right now we're caught up in the controversy of the result, the draw, you know, fans on both sides arguing about who they thought won. But really, it's done much more for the fighters themselves in terms of how history may reflect on their careers, but also in the immediate future for a rematch. Because if we talk about that bit first, I mean, what's going to happen? They have a rematch. It's going to be much bigger. So while we can talk about the controversy and how dodgy some of that scoring looked, and we can argue the toss over who won, they escaped with their records intact, they keep their O's, with the uh, buzz that's been generated from the fight, and there has been an immense buzz from the result, from the way that Tyson Fury performed, uh, him in particular, his comeback story, the way it ended, him getting up off the canvas. I mean, that has gone around the globe. It's not just a boxing story now, it's been picked up much more broadly and the world has been looking at what's happened. Whether that's in you know small detail or just small snippets, that's besides the point. They've actually been looking at boxing, the eyes have been on boxing, some of it for the wrong reasons, obviously the draw, there's a lot of controversy about that, especially that ridiculous 115-111 card. But the outcome is... The rematch, as we can see, if they hold it in May or June, which is what Deontay Wilder says he wants to do, and Shelley Finkel and such, uh, then that is going to be a very big fight for the heavyweight division. It will automatically be one of the biggest fights in the heavyweight division for all of 2019. There will be very few other fights that can rival that. Anthony Joshua's fights, they're always big fights, but in terms of if he's not in a fight with one of these two, you might say that uh, Tyson Fury and Deontay Wilder could be the biggest heavyweight fight of all of 2019. Obviously Tyson Fury, he says he wants to have a break over Christmas, make up his mind about what he wants to do, recalculate as he put it, but it would seem odds on that that rematch is going to happen. Deontay Wilder does not want to give Anthony Joshua a fight next. He wants the rematch, unfinished business, all that sort of stuff. But going back to some of the reason for the video, because I was thinking about these guys' um, records and such, um, because obviously having the O, the controversy, it helps the, the rematch. But then I was thinking about the, the legacy sort of implications from this fight. More broadly, say in say 15 or 20 years, if people are looking back at their records, because this is what you people do all the time anyway, you go back and have a look at Mike Tyson's re record or Evander Holyfield or Lennox Lewis, you want to check something and you see these results, you see the draws and such, and sometime with the sands and the haze of time, you know, some of the controversy, some of the what's gone on can just sort of, you know, be finessed over time. Some of the, uh, it can be forgotten to some extent, but the results remain. Regardless of what we thought about that result, it is in the books. And in my view, especially for Deontay Wilder, it enhances his legacy. And actually, we might get to him first. So if we go to his record now, you can see on screen here, Deontay Wilder, 40 and 0 with one draw. And that one draw, that might be the single most important result in all of Deontay Wilder's career. And some might think, well, that's a, a big claim to make. But if we actually look at who the opponent was, it was Tyson Fury. The guy who defeated Vladimir Klitschko, he's the man who beat the man, the lineal champion, and he's uh, Tyson Fury has drawn with Deontay Wilder. So we're just putting aside the controversy, but the headline result is a draw. That is, in my view, the actual, even though it's not a win, it's the best result of Deontay Wilder's career. Luis Ortiz before that, that was a very, very good win. That was the first time for many fans that they thought Deontay Wilder had truly stepped up into a fight that he could lose. And he almost did lose that, but he came through and won it. But Tyson Fury is another kettle of fish. 
Um, sure, there was the comeback story and other bits and pieces about him not being ready. But at the end of the day, Tyson Fury, you know, a very good boxer, technical boxer, hard to hit. Deontay Wilder eventually did catch up with him a couple of times. Sure, he was made to be, look silly at times. But at the end of the day, the headline result, a draw. Plus also, with the O staying intact, and he wants his rematch, his revenge, he wants to get some back on Tyson Fury in a rematch. Well, it's all coming up Deontay Wilder because the next fight, um, say if he makes, you know, $10 million in this fight, you know, we don't know what the numbers are. The pay-per-view buys somewhere over 300000 at the moment. The final tally is still coming in. It might be between three and 400000 in the end. 250000 was the break-even point from what we're being told from the initial reporting. Uh, his guarantee was $4 million, so everything above 250000 is upside. But, you know, if he makes, you know, $7 million or $10 million or whatever it ends up being, $14 million, he could likely double that again for that next fight. So while it may not have been the result he wanted, and we're hearing some things from Deontay Wilder, his arm wasn't quite right, he was having trouble throwing it, he was a bit overawed in the fight, a bit anxious and all that sort of stuff. Well, certainly for the next fight, there's questions about whether he can overcome some of that, some of his physical frailties and perhaps, you know, mental frailties, because he is saying the occasion got to him. Those are questions for another day for when, when the fight is next made, and especially if it's going to be in the United Kingdom. But in terms of Wilder and his career, I mean, Tyson Fury, Luis Ortiz, then we've got what I call middling meat. So his career has been sort of highlighted by a number of guys that are solid but not spectacular. Stavern, Washington, Ariola, Spilka, Dorpa, Molina, and Stavern the first time. And for basically his whole championship reign until Luis Ortiz, the Stavern win was the best win on his entire record. So when you consider he's got those seven defences against, um, or six defences against middling meat sort of guys, and then you chuck in Luis Ortiz, a very good win, and you chuck in a draw against Tyson Fury, his record is starting to look pretty decent overall. It's improving. He's rehabilitating his image. The cherry picking tag is going now. So Deontay Wilder, I've said this for, you know, the last year or so, if he can get another couple of really big wins, signature wins, if he can beat Tyson Fury the next time out, his record starts to look increasingly better and better and better. Because until now, you know, there was certainly, it looked a little light, it was a bit padded with, you know, obviously all the developmental fights and whatnot. He took a while to step up, but when he has stepped up, the middling fights, now Luis Ortiz, now the draw with Tyson Fury, it's not actually far off being a really, really good record. And when I say really, really good record, that you can start comparing to boxers from other eras. Because, say for example, if he does beat Tyson Fury next out, he's got uh, a win over Tyson Fury, a draw with Tyson Fury, Fury, Luis Ortiz, and then you have those other championship fights. It actually starts to come together quite well. But that's the thing now. He can't have any downtime now in terms of a lackluster opponents that people have no, you know, willingness to see because we've been through that period. He has to fight all the top guys now that he can, you know, basically back to back to back to back to back because his um, career demands it now. And if he really wants the fame and the fortune, he has to go that route. And obviously a Tyson Fury rematch or an Anthony Joshua fight, you know, those are the two logical options in terms of the what next. He's got that uh, mandatory consideration with Dominic Brazil that he will have to take care of at some point, but it looks like a rematch, you know, could happen before that. It's hard to say. The WBC, they're likely going to look at, you know, what's happened in this first fight and they may, may get on board with an immediate rematch. They may order that and make that all legit in terms of they will come through over the top and say, yeah, yeah, that's fine. That's fine. You can do that. Poor old Dominic Brazil. He probably will be made to wait for some extra time to come. So in terms of Tyson Fury, if we go to him, 27 wins, zero defeats and one draw. And I know, you know, some people don't have a lot of love for Deontay Wilder, but the fact is he's the WBC champion. He's had seven defenses of his title before he got in front of Tyson Fury. He's got this draw with Deontay Wilder. And um, you'd have to say Deontay Wilder is one of the best names on Tyson Fury's um, record. Until now, it was slightly thin in terms of the opposition. Sure, he's got this massive win against Vladimir Klitschko back in 2015. 
But apart from that, a good win over Christian Hammer and also Derek Chisora. That Derek Chisora rematch, because he's fought Chisora twice, very good performance, one of the best, if not the best of his career, up until this Deontay Wilder fight. Many people have come through in saying that Tyson Fury has never boxed better because obviously the circumstances regarding his comeback. A lot of people still will hold that Vladimir Klitschko win up and go, well actually that was a special performance, and maybe wasn't the performance in terms of a viewing spectacle, but he dethroned a champion who'd been on the scene, you know, ruling the scene for a decade. So I guess we have to look at Tyson Fury and go, in 10 or 15 years' time, looking at his career, I think people would sort of say, you know, it was a pretty spectacular comeback that he made. Obviously, some of the stuff with the drink and drugs, that will never be forgotten. But it's part of his story now. And the overcoming mental health issues, overcoming his demons, obviously the alcohol, the drugs, he's had to kick the addictions and whatnot coming back to secure a draw with Deontay Wilder. A lot of people will say that was a kind of a miraculous result, um, regardless of the circumstances and the controversy. And some people are saying Tyson Fury is the WBC champion just without the belt. And if Tyson Fury does immediately face Deontay Wilder next, he gets to put the wrong right. And that's the opportunity both guys will want to no doubt sort of, uh, you know, seize upon. And a rematch with Wilder because of the controversy, everything that happened, there's unfinished business. It may be enough to keep Tyson Fury motivated in his career, but let's hope. But in terms of the other thorn that both guys haven't sort of addressed at the moment, if they don't fight him next, eventually Anthony Joshua is a guy that one, if not both of these guys will have to face if they truly want to claim that they are the best in the division. But the same goes for Joshua as well, because at the moment there is some speculation among fans who is the best. Uh, people have the unofficial best, but if there is no round robin of sorts, we will never truly know who is the best. And Tyson Fury had spoke about this, but in terms of his legacy with the sort of the myth and the lore of his comeback, getting off the canvas in the 12th round, it's certainly taken a boost after that fight. We didn't know what sort of Tyson Fury we would get and we got one that was uh, near close to his best, his former best. Who knows if he can get back to what his best was. But maybe he will be a slightly different fighter now regardless because he's older, wiser. He might do things a little bit differently. But, you know, certainly his skills have not deserted him entirely. He's proved he's still got enough in the tank. And the next fight between the two, it's another chance to add to the legacy. And uh, let's hope there is not the sort of controversy involved, you know, with this first fight. But, you know, Deontay Wilder is talking trilogy now that he may make Anthony Joshua wait. And a trilogy could happen between him and Tyson Fury. I mean, we'll have to see on that. It kind of depends what happens in the next fight. But both of these guys have come away um, and their legacies, besides their O's, their legacies have grown to some extent. For Wilder, a draw. Uh, he sort of escaped with a draw, but for his record and, you know, looking back and, you know, through the annals of history, it's going to look a pretty decent result for him. And for Tyson Fury, he still holds on to his O. He's still the lineal champion. He hasn't lost that. And he gets to do it all again in, a, you know, in four or five months. What do you make of it all? Drop a comment, loud and often. Hit like, hit subscribe, follow me on Twitter, boxing underscore squared. I'm out.